Welcome back to the Karma Speed Garage TB Performance. One of my favorite mods on the Focus ST was the crash bar. So I got another white one for the Focus RS, of course. RDU brace, and then we have a strut tower brace. And this is gonna make our lives so much easier because we'll be able to get to the top of the coilovers so you can adjust them on the fly now. So this is a great upgrade for the Focus RS because everyone hates how you can't get to them very easily. All of these parts will be linked in the description below. Whether you have a Focus RS or an ST, TB Performance has a collection of parts for both cars. We're not doing a step-by-step -step removal of the front bumper because that happened in the front mount intercooler video. So if you wanna know how to do this, I wanna give you as much confidence as possible, but we might as well skip that part because we already covered it in the other video. So I'll have that linked in the description. So if you need it, it'll be there. I just wanna get straight to the fun part with you guys, install all this new stuff. So let's get to it and get moving. And this is where we just start removing things, one at a time. It's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm making this out to be worse than it is. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. We're gonna do this together, right? All right, plastic clip remover. There's a bracket, oh, push pin. Can you see my hand? Little bolt right there. That looks like a seven mil, eight mil. Mm, it's an eight. This holds the horn and this will get mounted to the new crash bar. Thread the bolt back in there so I don't lose it. And the wiring harness is attached in two places. Pry tool back at it again. I want to be able to put this stock crash bar back, so I'm going to do these with caution. That top one came out smooth. That one didn't break. Cool. So that's free. Now this box, whatever this is, is connected with an 8 mil. That's free. Looks like there's two bolts on the bottom up inside here. I'm going to go ahead and remove the brake duct because it is in the way right now. This is the support for the front mount intercooler and it looks like there's two 10 mil bolts by that plug. That I could just pull out, made a ton of extra room. I just noticed that this is still hooked up right here. It's all disconnected. Indeed a 10 mil. Heading to the top, the last thing to disconnect is this right here. That connects the radiator support to the crash bar. Takes a 13 mil. So you're gonna pull the bolt out from this side. The next step is there's these tabs that need to be pressed in to release it, but that can't happen until we remove those four that hold it on. Before I do those, we should attack this side and get everything off this side ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the brake duct on this side just cause. Just go ahead and hit this wiring harness. Free there. Big old bulky washer fluid tank. Seems to be in the way, but we can loosen it. There's two bolts, 10 mils. Now this can just kind of move however I need it to. Focusing on the horn, 10 mil bracket comes right off. Intercooler support, hopefully everything just hangs tight. 10 mil. The second one's a little further back. It almost tricked me. Jack for support on the right, because it wants to fall that direction. 13 mil bolt right here. The radiator support right here, I'm worried about it getting hung up, but it's free, so that's great news. Next up is finding my way to all four of the bolts. 13 millimeter. tight up top so the ratchet will do. I'm gonna leave one attached up here. Head to the driver's side. Okay. 
This plastic piece between the factory crash bar tab right here and the radiator support, don't want to break it. That would be super easy to break. I got the other one off. It's tricky. I've got, you guys see me use these tools all the time if you watch the videos, O-ring seal removal tool. I use this for plastic clips all the time. This little blade, this is for a hammer in Milwaukee. This thing is awesome. So what I figured out is that if you push something like this here to create some pressure and use the this tool to push the tabs in to get it started, it'll do what you need it to do without breaking it. I wanna get it out of here. You gotta be patient and work it out. Whew. It barely comes out of there. That is no joke. Fully intact, still functional. Now the crash bar is just free. So since it sits on these studs, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the last two nuts. I'm not worried about it falling. But I did have those nuts there just in case. Let's see how easy this one has to come off. Just barely fall out. On the inside right here, I noticed another spot where a wire is attached to the crash bar. And there it is. Grab the new one. Push it up in here. This should be way easier. Get all the cables out of the way. Cool. Like that. Like that a lot. Handful of nuts. Gonna throw them on. The four bolts that hold the front mount intercooler support to the crash bar, I had to go buy some bolts. So I just bought some N10 flange bolts with nuts. Now we can mount it up. Gonna throw some Loctite on these. The intercooler support is tight on the crash bar. Now I can tighten the crash bar to the frame. Repeat the process over here. 10 mil bolt to hold the washer tank on. Got the bolt behind there. Now we need to fasten the front, which you know what that means. This is a nice zip tie from Wire Care. It's a metal tab inside here, so it holds better and it's stronger. No reason to go crazy tight on this. I just want this to be snug and solid. Here's how I mounted the horn on the passenger side. Eight millimeter. This plug will get used when we put the bumper back on. So I'm gonna let that hang out right there. The last part of the equation is getting rid of this flimsiness. I lost my flush cutters using the scissors. Brake ducts are in. Everything fit together nicely. Zip ties won't be seen, so it's not a big deal. Here's how everything fit over here. I tucked up this horn. This is the only thing I'm not in love with, but it's the only place I could get it out of the way. So it'll be fine to be able to have this, shave some weight, and we'll see if it peeks through the front grill at all. A lot of RS guys will run a mesh grill. I like the stock ones so much. It's like my favorite part about the car is the front bumper. So I'm not gonna sacrifice it, but knowing this more lightweight setup to just make up for that weight we added with the intercooler too. A little savings, anything helps with the RS cause it's so much heavier. Looking pretty sweet though. Let's get the front bumper on. Yo, I did not expect it to even poke this much. It's literally perfect. You see it from a low angle, this is just, mm, yes, it's worth it. I thought it wasn't gonna show at all. 
I'm so thankful. I'm not gonna lie, my spirits were down. I was like, I don't even know if I should have hit Danny up to do this, if it was worth it. I just wanted this car to be so subtly clean. Like, oh look, it's like a, oh, whoa, that thing's not, looks so, mmm. Oh, look at the, oh. And this, this, this did it. But when you're a normal human standing up, ooh, nice touch of white, little race car energy. TB performance tucked under, oh! Oh my goodness, can you stop it, please? Whoever buys this car, send me an email, Cameron Alford at karmaspeed.com. Yes, I'm gonna sell it, the show must go on, but oh my lord, I am so excited. Wow, this whole day I just like didn't think it was gonna be this clean. It needed a touch of white in the front, and I just, I don't want any type of stickers, like, Toe hook. I just want it to be like OEM plus, but so subtly just focus RS goodness. I, that excites me so much. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is easy now. Bumper completely reinstalled, check. Pull both vents off. Pull this rubber piece off. T30 Torx. Swap out the T30 for a 10 mil. Two bolts. Grab the, oh, and there are these plastic clips weren't in here. I'm gonna need to get new ones because they weren't gripping. But make sure you get those. Now we have access. Oh, there's another one here. Up in here, you got the wiper blade bolt. This one needs a swivel socket. Using your plastic pry tool, you can get the, the active dampening wire out of the way. Next up, I'm gonna move this up to get to the nuts holding the coilover in. That also holds the strut tire brace on. Using a magnet to get the washer back in this corner. Don't wanna drop it. Repeat the process on the other side. In the middle right here, I see two, eight or 10 mils, definitely 10. Put my hand under it so that nut doesn't fall. Freedom, maybe. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to remove this cowl. Taking the windshield wipers off, 15 mil. It's almost like you have to pick it up together. Pry bar time. Sticking the pry bar up where the paint doesn't show or anything was ideal. Got the two plates for the top. I'm gonna figure out how they go. Where they go. In the packaging for this, Got the two ends, and then here are two nuts to use to hold the windshield wiper motors to the new brackets we're putting in there. You can see the new brackets, and right up in there are the silver guys. We need a nut on the back side. I'm gonna go ahead and get this locking nut pretty far down. Put our lock washer on there. I'm gonna thread it in here. All right, all right, all right. I had to hit up Danny because I thought, bro, the threads don't work. Hey, Cam, Danny said, bro, there's a right and a left-handed thread because it's adjustable, like an end link. And one twists the normal way and one twists the opposite way. This is the normal one. Make sure you have the lock washer. Now I'm gonna go ahead and twist this thing to the left. Weirdest thing ever, to do at least. You would think putting this on would be easy, but I figured out it's not, and then I figured out how to do it. So put your mount on that side, then take this whole mount, slide it through there, and then lock it in. And that's the only way to get it in. Now I want to get this to a happy place and tight. 
24 millimeter on the top for the lock washer, 24 mil on the bottom. I'm gonna snug these up so that can't come loose. Now, up in here, take our little bolt through. This thing comes off way easier than I thought. It just pops off, so I pulled it off. Now we have way more access to the areas we need, which is cool. To hold the windshield wiper motors to the new brackets, this is what I was gonna use, but it's actually too short of a bolt. So I went to Ace Hardware, got a little longer one, an M6 with a washer and a nut. And this makes the job a lot easier. It was worth the trip. Slide the bolt through very carefully. I gotta put gloves on. I definitely noticed that putting the nut on the backside first and then I can see with my eyes straight through the hole and line up the nut perfectly. Then just drop this in there and start to uh, thread it in by hand. When you got a blind nut on the backside you can't get to, I found this just to save that little bit of time. Get it hand tight. It's a lock nut on the backside. All I gotta do is kind of put my finger on the backside, tighten it up, and that's tight. Now I can snug these up. Which actually, this side's already done. Head over here. These are gonna be reversed, but I'm gonna take my 24 mil and tighten this nut against the lock washer on the strut tower itself until this crush washer, lock washer, whatever they're called, is clamped down and tight. Pop it over to the other side, snug it up. Get my greasy hand marks off of it. That looks pretty cool. Now I can finally use these and get access to them. Now I talked about in one of the last videos that I wanted to go stiffer. So one, two, three, four, five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. See what that feels like out in the hills. I'm gonna button this up and let's hit the RDU brace. Factory strut tower. This is the underside of the cowling. Did not use it. Pretty sure it doesn't fit, but I got this rubber seal here. You're not gonna have any place to mount these holes right here, which is fine. And then I put the two T30 bolts, screws I mean, on each side. That should hold it down plenty fine. If you're wondering what it looks like underneath there, that's a little look tucked away. Now, if I want to adjust my coilovers, Beep, 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 beep. Accessible. Literally can pull over on the side of the road, change it before I hit some fun back roads, and then back to soft mode for daily driver if I wanted to make it as functional as possible. This is easy, my friends. Check this out. So, all we're doing is replacing these bars. Pull these bolts out. Throw in the brace and we're good. Once again, it is that time. Uh, I'm gonna guess uh, 17 and 15. 15? Darn it. 17? Darn it. 14 and 18? Not 14. 18. Is it 15? I guess so. Easy enough. Uh, this is how I damage my hearing. Wow. This is why I own a mid-size 3 8 ratchet. Breaks things loose so easily. Right. This is a beautiful moment right here. I need your attention. Okay, can't get my hand in here, but these Icon sockets, let me tell you, it's worth the money. If you look inside of it, it doesn't go all the way down. So I could take my nut, oh bruh, they're flanged. You're, you're good either way, you don't need expensive sockets, but 
I almost sold you on it. If they weren't flanged, we would have been good because it would have caught it. The washers that go right here, I am gonna put them back. I like the stubby socket for the hand feel. So I'm not, I'm making sure I'm not cross threading. Solid. If you have that itch to modify and you're never worked on an RS before, never worked on a car before, go to Harbor Freight, grab a jack, jack stands, sockets, some ratchets. This is an amazing install. If you've never worked on cars, you want to build up your confidence one baby step at a time. I've been doing this for, I've been wrenching on things since I can walk, thanks to my dad. So if you're feeling behind, don't even stress it. Do stuff like this, it builds you up. What does it feel like behind the wheel? First, I have a box from Mountain. We're gonna install that next. I wanna walk you through it. It's gonna make a big difference because what we did today is gonna be minor adjustment. I wanna save it for one big trip about 45 minutes away. The back roads to have some fun with you. So if you missed the last back roads video where we tested everything we've done so far, click the video right here. We'll break down. Are the BCs worth it? Wheels and tires, what can we feel like? Any complaints about where the RS is at? Getting rid of that active dampening? It's all right here. See you over there.